Please welcome to the stage, Daniel Connell. Thank you very much. You beauty. Here we are. Thank you. That's great. Oh, what a lovely, what a lovely. Re Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks so much for coming out to Newham for the night. Is everybody, everybody good? Pumped? Good on you. It's good to be here. It's great to be out uh, in the country. I, I was actually very happy with just how quickly everybody was snapping up the tickets to this. I was surprised how quickly people were happy to sort of come an hour out of, you know, come out into the country for the evening, be lured out to the country. Not too sure what you were coming out here for, <laughs> uh, but I appreciate you all coming, so it is great to see you all. Um, if I was a cult leader, I'd be very happy right now. I'd <laughs> be very pleased. Um, it's, got, it's a little bit culty, isn't it, actually, tonight? Like, I've lured you out to a small country town, just one street town. <laughs> got you into the local hall that used to be a church. Very... Made you all drink that liquid five minutes ago. <laughs> mm. It will hurt a little bit, but just get into it. Just, <laughs> just go with it, everybody. Uh, it is nice to be out uh, doing stuff, isn't it? It's nice to be living. I, I'm, I've come up here tonight, you probably think Daniel's pretty up and about with life at the moment. I'm not. No, I do have the shits with some things and people in my life. I want to get this off my chest straight away. I'm a bit upset with my local Coles at the moment. Um, they've recently added in kid-sized trolleys to the weekly shop. <laughs> That's cute, isn't it? Little pink, knee-high... Steel trolleys for four to ten-year-olds. <laughs> says on the side, four to ten-year-olds. That's cute, isn't it? Little knee-high, reinforced steel <laughs> trolleys. It's lovely to know I'm, I'm doing my weekly shop now and I'm looking at my sort of level on the shelf, what, picking out what I want for my din-dins. There's a possibility that some little fuck <laughs> with the coordination of a puppy <laughs> is going to come flipping and flopping around the corner around 26 kilos of reinforced steel fair into my shins. <laughs> Thanks very much, Coles, you assholes. Uh, <laughs> I'm wearing cricket pads to the shops, guys. I'm wearing cricket pads to the shop. I want to look like a fucking idiot. I'm getting all sorts of weird looks from the other shoppers. Yeah, the bike helmet's probably overkill, but I'm safe. <laughs> Safety first. I've had two things happen to me already. Uh, one that stood out with these stupid trolleys, an incident. Straight away. Aisle three, my local coals. A lot going on in aisle three, my local coals. A lot of specials and whatnot. I come around the corner. Here's this boy, about five years old, with a little death trap in front of him, pushing it along. <laughs> Red in the face, full of sugar, just lolling from side to side, having the time of his life, not a parent in sight. Comes fanging down, I thought he's going to kill someone, this prick, I'm going to stop this. And he got to me and just put my foot out like that, stopped him, and then I just picked his little trolley up and popped it up on the top shelf. <laughs> up the hill with all the excess chippies, he didn't know what to do, he looked quite shaken up by the whole situation. <laughs> his lips started to quiver and he fucked off, but... Um... <laughs> Came back with his old man, his old man gave me an absolute spray. <laughs> Couldn't hear a thing through the helmet, but he was definitely... Uh, <laughs> he was definitely upset. Going on the veins in his neck, he was definitely upset, that guy. Uh, I've spent a bit of time at the, uh, my local Coles recently. I, I've actually started playing a game. I don't know if any of you do this. Give me a cheer if you ever look into people's baskets when you're down the shops. Give us a cheer. <laughs> oh, yeah, good stuff. Get into it. If you don't, get stuck in it. It is good times, right? Like, just look into their basket, play this game, try and pick what the person's having for their dinner. That's a fun thing to do. Uh, don't reach in and grab items out. They fucking hate that, right? Just leave their stuff alone. <laughs> but just sort of look what they're having for their dinner. Try and pick out what sort of person you're dealing with. That's what I like to do, what sort of dinner they're having. I was behind a guy who was mid-30s, and in his basket, uh, you can tell what he's having for dinner. He's got frozen uh, pies, frozen chips, and a bottle of Coke, so we can all see what he's having for the din dinner. This guy, yeah. <laughs> A heart attack, right? Where's your, <laughs> where's your salad, you fucking crocodile? It's 2022. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard, though. I was behind this guy, mid-40s. See if we can figure this out as a room, what this guy was up to with his dinner. In his basket, four items. He's got a chicken breast. Cool. Uh, Mars bar. Yummo. <laughs> Lube. <laughs> for sex. Uh, and air freshener. What the fuck's this guy up to with his Saturday night? <laughs> this is a serial killer combination I've ever seen. <laughs> what's he doing, this guy? What, what's going on? I, I can tell you what he's doing because I do play the game a lot. I, I reckon I've figured out what that guy's up to. I reckon he's putting that chicken breast in the freezer for another night. He's got no rub, no flavour for the chicken. Uh, he's, putting the, he's putting the air freshener on the back of the shitter like we all would. Um, and he's sticking that Mars bar right up his ass, isn't he? 
he, he definitely is. He was a real weirdo, that guy. Uh, it's good times. So, yeah. <laughs> I actually witnessed something recently in my local coal I'd never seen before. I witnessed someone shoplift for the first time ever in my life. I don't know if you've ever witnessed that in your life. But uh, I was in there and I was picking up some Cornettos on a Tuesday night and I saw a kid, I reckon he was about 14, this kid. I witnessed him steal something. He wasn't stealing easy stuff like cans of Coke or chockey bars uh, like I was. I witnessed a... <laughs> I went, witnessed a 14-year-old kid steal a meat tray before my eyes. <laughs> Full meat tray, full barbecue pack, big one like that with the chops and sausies on it, a few steakettes and the parsley on top, straight down the front of his tracky dacks. I saw him do it, I was like, that's fucking hilarious. I'll have a bit of fun with him though, because there's no one else around. I said, mate, you don't need to put your shopping in your pants, there's red baskets up the front. There's red baskets. Mucking around, just having a bit, really just messing around with him. a bit of fun between mates, right? He swings around, aggressive, and goes, fuck off. Really great. 14 years old telling me to fuck off or trying to intimidate me. He was like 50 kilos, this kid, right? Nothing of him. Well, 52 with the meat tray, right? But nothing of him. Like, he was just <laughs> like a little kid telling me to fuck off. I couldn't care less about the meat tray stealing before he told me to fuck off. But once he told me to fuck off, I was like, nah, I want this kid dead. Let's kill a kid. <laughs> Let's kill a kid. It'd be fun, you know? <laughs> Clean up in aisle three this prick's dead body, right? Let's kill him. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to get security, mate. He goes, oh, don't get security. If you do, I'll knock you out. I was like, you're not even knocking a hole in the plastic on the meat tray, mate. You're not going to knock <laughs> So I turn to go get security, and security's on us in a flash. This big guy, big security guard, he's seen him on the CCTV, obviously. And he gets up to the kid and goes, Jared, Jared. <laughs> it's not his first rodeo I've been here before. Jared, put the meat tray back. He's like, what meat tray? He clearly has <laughs> a protruding, he's got a boogie board down his pants. What meat trays? Like the one in your pants, just put it back, everyone call the cops. As soon as the cops are mentioned, he, Jared's shoulders slumped down, he looks quite sad. He sort of pulls out the meat tray, all the meat's kind of scooched up one end. He <laughs> levels it all out like a gentleman and all the sausages sort of <laughs> roll back into place and he puts it back in the fridge and just sort of skulks out of the store. And I just stood, put the cornettos down, just had a good clap. Just thought, that was fucking excellent. Great thing to witness on a Tuesday night. I did take two things away from that experience. So I am I'm worried about the youth today. Like, are they all like that little... Little kids, they're all little meat stealing assholes. These little <laughs> haven't had much to do with 14 year old kids of late. It's a worry for our future if that's what they're like. Um, the other thing I took away th from that experience was um, a half price meat tray, which was uh, <laughs> quite nice. <laughs> hmm. uh, the other thing I'm upset with at the moment, it does annoy me, is uh, the local hoons around my, my neighbourhood. I'm, 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 that's how old I'm getting. I'm sick of hoons. Kids driving cars like dickheads. I've had enough. So much. I was actually at the lights recently. I got asked to be in a street race. Gives a cheer if you've been in a street race before. <laughs> Doesn't happen often, but yeah, a couple of people. Good on you. Good stuff. Uh, we'll race you home after the show. I, uh... <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll set the scene for you. I'm in my car at the lights, waiting for the green to come on, as you are when you're at the lights, and a, a mid-90s red Commodore pulls up alongside me, and the passenger, or scrub for any TLC fans in the room, and you sort of... <laughs> Oh, there's a few in, that's nice, it's a great song. <laughs> he leans out the window and he's like, hey mate, it's like, yeah champ, he goes, when the lights go green, we'll race you. And I was like, oh, all right, cockhead, let's go, right? And I uh, should have called him a cockhead, I was just excited about the race, but I just sort of <laughs> gripped onto the wheel and I just, so I actually started getting a bit clammy, my hands were getting clammy, my brow was getting a bit sweaty, I was like, fuck, I'm actually in a street race here, better switch on, take this seriously. And I had a quick peek across to them again, they're like your typical early 20s cockheads, like just full of Red Bull, just mother energy drinks, just... <laughs> Razzed up to the max, but credit where credit's due. The light went green and they just fucking took off like a rocket. Bit of smoke, phoom, gone, out of there. Uh, and I, uh, I turned left. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to the shops to get some Cornettos. Right? But what I, what I couldn't get over, what annoyed me was just the brazen confidence of these kids asking people to drag off the lights. Like, that's unbelievable. And since that day, I'm seeing it all the time around Melbourne where, where I live. I was out on the street on the edge of the city, Melbourne town. I, I saw something... I couldn't believe, right? I'm walking a busy roundabout, I'm walking towards it, and I see a Commodore again, no surprises there, <laughs> come flying down the hill, four young guys in, pea plates on, they go through the roundabout and fishtail out of the roundabout. Very easy thing to do on a wet day, you probably all fishtail at some point in your life, you might fishtail on the way home tonight. It's with the back of your car, <laughs> swings out like that, like, like a fishtail, it's in the name. So they're fishtailed <laughs> through the roundabout, I see the driver, he take one, one hand off the wheel and starts giving himself a thumbs up, going, yeah, like he's done something <laughs> cool. It's not impressive, mate, doing a fishtail on a wet day. Like, my mum is the most conservative driver I know. She fishtailed last time I was driving with her. 
We're in a little Mazda in my hometown. She went through the roundabout too fast. Mum didn't start going, woo. <laughs> she just gripped the wheel a bit tight, looked at me and went, I nearly fucking crashed then. I, like, oh, <laughs> I saw that, Mum. I saw that. Uh, probably the best hoonie I've ever seen, actually. This was, this was over in Perth, so I had to travel to see the best I've ever seen. I, I landed at Perth Airport and I witnessed the best hoonie I've ever witnessed. I've been there, the arrivals bay, Perth Airport, with about four or five strangers, when a ute pulls in the arrivals bay at Perth Airport, two young guys in. Passenger gets out of the ute, gets his bag and his swag off the back of the ute, pops him on the ground, gets his phone out, starts filming. I'm there with about four or five strangers. What, what's he filming? What's going on? The ute starts doing a huge burnout. Full burning rubber, that horrible thick smoke. The car fishtails and fucks off. The guy filming puts his phone in his pocket, turns around to us, right? Four or five strangers goes, Hey, hey, welcome to Australia. <laughs> I was like, I'm Australian, you cockhead. <laughs> We're in the domestic area. <laughs> I, 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 honestly, I'm worried. I'm worried about these meat stealing kids, hoons. Like I've just, I've had a son in the last couple of years. I'm worried, like I'm worried. How do I stop him from becoming one of these people? Like I am worried about it. Like I've had this kid. How do I not make him, you know, make him not grow up like that? I, uh, I think about it all the time. Like. Um, I had, I had a kid two years ago, two, two years old now. And, and when it happened, I, the people told me, yeah, that's the best thing that'll ever happen to you. I was like, it's great, don't get me wrong, but like watching Jared steal that meat tray was pretty sick. Like, it was like a, <laughs> but that was a good night. Um, it's been good, though. It has been good. Uh, I will just say, I don't want to you know, talk about parenthood. I don't teach, you know, I'm sure a lot of you have kids, but I will just say, if you ever plan to have a kid, just make sure you've got all your ducks in a row. That's all I'll say. And if you never plan to have a kid, uh, then you are missing out <laughs> on absolutely nothing. You don't miss out on anything. <laughs> nothing. You get, to, you get to go to all the parties, all the fun stuff. You get to li live your life. As per you. I fucking hate those people now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Life, my life, honestly, after I had my son, my life changed overnight. Everything changes. It's all about him now, which sucks. I had to do all this stuff. <laughs> like, just totally changed my outlook on life. Like, I, I just always think about him. Like, I had to get my will sorted. That's what I've, I've done in the last few years, get my will sorted. Gives a cheer if you've got your will sorted. <laughs> yeah, fuck all people get their will sorted. <laughs> I've noticed. About 10 people out of, what, 80-odd here? Like, ten, yeah, nobody gets their will sorted. It's, it's a pretty full-on document when you do it. Just be prepared for it. I've actually brought mine along tonight just to go through it with you, just to show you <laughs> what questions you'll come across on your will when you eventually come to do it. Um, just know it is not for the faint-hearted. The will's pretty hardcore questions on there, FYI. Oh, it probably is for the faint-hearted when you think about it. But I <laughs> really, really boiled it down. Um, first question that got me... Stumped me a little bit. Uh, executor and trustee. Oh, I had to Google that straight away because I thought it said executor and trustee. <laughs> I was like, you got to put down who kills you. That's weird. Like, I don't know who that's going to be. I don't know. Um, but th that's just where you identify who you wish to take care of all your shit once you pass away. And it does say uh, it's wise to name a second person should the first person not want to do it. So I ch obviously chose my wife for the first person. And as a second person, I just um, I got in touch with Jared actually and just got him there. <laughs> Um, yeah, he's going to do it for me. Um, as I say, life changed overnight. I reckon I'm doing stuff now that, like, I, I, I wouldn't even thought about doing a couple of years ago. Like, I, I probably haven't got a plastic bag at the supermarket now for probably 18 months, I reckon. No, nah, cheers, guys. Thanks very much. Uh, <laughs> no, sit down. It's fine. No, no, stop. Uh, it's nice, isn't it, once you stop using the plastic bags, isn't it? Because then you've got that space in your cupboard in your kitchen or your laundry and you can use that space. You know, there's not hundreds of plastic bags in there anymore. You can use that space for other fun stuff, um, like hundreds of green reusable bags. I fucking, <laughs> I fucking forget. Every time I go to the shop, I'm buying a new $1 fucking green bag. Got them coming out of my ass. I've got more green bags. It's worse for the environment. They don't flush well. It's very frustrating. <laughs> Touch your head in. I'm doing stuff. I, I, I'm picking up rubbish now. I'm pushing my son around our neighbourhood in his pram. I'm picking up rubbish. I never used to, uh, you know, not just on the street. I used to obviously clean up Australia Day. I'd have a couple of goes at that. <laughs> not just randomly pick. I'm picking up stuff. I'm picking up stuff all the time. I picked up recently. I picked up. Uh, <laughs> I picked up an old iPod, which was pretty exciting. So rubbish essentially. But I was really, 
I was really pumped about it because I love love my music, right? And I've got all the old connections to iPods and whatnot. And I thought, I'll take that home and see, see what sort of person this was that owned this iPod. And I got it home and plugged it in. Not much in the general feed of music, but I go to the playlist and this is where the gold was. The previous owner had a playlist, top of the rung, called Music to Root To. <laughs> well, this is it's obviously a legend on this before I... <laughs> Music to root to. I'm like, all right, I'm into this. What sort of songs are in music to root to? This legend, what, they, what do they listen to? First song in music to root to, the playlist, The Prodigy Firestarter. <laughs> you don't remember that? It's a 90s bang. A very fast way to start a root. I'm sure you'll agree. <laughs> remember that song? Dang, 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 dang. And then just, that's a quick one. Like, that's, it's too fast, isn't it? It's so fast. It's a fast way to start a root. Like, imagine if you were the routine in that situation. <laughs> like, and the rooters got the iPod. It's, Come home for a drink. Yeah, we'll go home for a drink. You get have a couple of drinks. Yeah, have a couple of wines. You're getting hot and heavy. Do you want to listen to some music? You're like, oh, that sounds nice. Thinking they're going to put on jazz or something. <laughs> and just straight into that. That's <laughs> catch you off guard, wouldn't it? Um, song two on Music to Root 2. Bon Jovi, It's My Life. <laughs> what the fuck's happened here? We've started the fastest song of all time. Now we've got a bit of It's My Life, a bit of stadium rock with Bon Jovi. That well, was, was confusing. Uh, but anyway, uh, song three on Music to Root 2, Let It Be by the Beatles. <laughs> what is fucking going on here? Four and a half minutes ago, we're rooting mad, like going, <laughs> we're prodigy fight, we're absolutely banging away. Now you're whispering words of wisdom. <laughs> I've never listened to Let It Be and thought, oh, I could fuck something now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just a nice, nice song. I'm convinced the route has finished during the, you know, it finished during the Prodigy song. If, you, if you're starting that fast, you're finishing that fast, mate. You know? So they finished it in the Prodigy song. They're just reminiscing about a, a Bon Jovi concert they went to at some point, and then they're just having a cup of tea during Let It Be, I guess. Oh. Song four in Music to Root Two. No such thing. <laughs> Just nine minutes 40 of rooting time for this legend. <laughs> That's all they got in them. <laughs> I've actually got that iPod with me tonight. If anybody would like to take that home after the show, you can have it. <laughs> so I can't root to music at all. I'm not really into that stuff. Um, <laughs> spoken word, that's what gets me up in a room. <laughs> the Harry Potter series, if you must know. <laughs> I've cut the plastic out of my life via, uh, you know, via the, via the uh, plastic bags. But there is a bit of plastic in my life I've still got that I can't get rid of that is annoying me and not great for the environment. And that is the form of my DVDs. Gives a cheer if you've still got your DVD collection. <laughs> <laughs> Couple of people. Let me tell you, they are fucking hard to get rid of, FYI. <laughs> I've taken them to op shops. They're like, they, they don't want them. Nobody wants them anymore. Back in the day, I, I collected my DVDs from sort of maybe like... 2002 to 2012. That was kind of the peak years for DVDs, wasn't it? That was as good as it gets. Um, I'll put that on DVD, by the way, if anybody <laughs> wants that after the show. But, um, yeah, I can't get rid of them now. I used to be the cool guy in my friendship group during those years. The cool guy, everybody would come over to see my collection. Now I'm just a loser with 617 DVDs. <laughs> and I can't get rid of them. I feel really bad, because, I, I, like, all those years ago, I put trying to look cool and with my collection and show off to me. I should have just hired the DVD. I only watched it once anyway. <laughs> but I put trying to look cool and, you know, impress girls and trying to get sex, basically. <laughs> you know, I put that in front of the environment. And I am uh, terribly sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> and I only got... Uh, I only had sex three times during that entire ten-year period as well. Um, her name was Colleen. She worked at JB Hi-Fi. Uh, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> I was in there all the time. <laughs> JB Hi-Fi, obviously not. <laughs> not Colleen. Um, I'm, re <laughs> I'm recycling as well. It gives a cheer if you love recycling. Yeah, a couple of people. Yeah, get into it. It's good fun. I'm, I'm right into it now. Proper dad mode. I'm lifting the lid up. I'm reading all the stuff, what goes where, bending and stuff to see if it goes in. Love my recycling night, Wednesday night, if you must know. And... Uh, <laughs> I've, I, I, found, I always like to find, you know, find things in the, that I'd like to talk about on stage. And I found this. I'd love to share it with you tonight. Just doing my recycling. Check it out. A little bit of show and tell. I'll hold that up for you. Look at that. Where you're sitting tonight probably just looks like a regulation empty bottle of Kicker Man soy sauce. It's not. This one's got a little yellow sticker here on the neck that says bonus 46 mils. <laughs> How good's that? <laughs> um, 
I don't know how many times I've finished a bottle of soy sauce, which is every six to nine months. <laughs> and I thought, that bottle's missing somewhere between 43 and 49 mils of soy sauce. <laughs> Problem solved. Thanks very much, <laughs> kicker man. Um, what a bargain. Um, if none of you got anything out of that joke tonight, um, which a few of you didn't, maybe it, it'll cheer you up now and I'm just walking around with an empty bottle of soy sauce in my back pocket. <laughs> purposes of comedy. Um, and that might come in handy tonight after the show. Someone might try and jump me in the car park and I'll just pull that out as a defence. Like, the person that jumps me will be like, yeah, go on, hit me with it. It's only just a regulation bottle of soy sauce. <laughs> and I'll smack him over the head and he'll be like, oh, fuck. That hurt a lot more than I thought it would. <laughs> it's a bonus 46, mate. Next little bit here. Specific bequests. That's the next little tricky question on the will. But that is, this is the one that everybody knows about. You all know about. This is the one in the movies where they all go... <laughs> right reaction to. <laughs> um, specific bequests. This is the one in the movies where people, you know, they go in to see what their family's left them. You know, that, that's the classic one. So it's just what you want to leave loved ones. Uh, this took me forever because you've got to outline the item. Uh, you want to leave them and then you've got to put down their full name, Date of birth, address, phone number, the lot. And I had like 300 people, so I had to do full name, date of birth, address, plus the titles of both DVDs. <laughs> um, I wanted them to have. <laughs> hmm. I'll tell you who I'm not leaving any gifts to. There's a few people that I miss out on gifts from them. That's all like dickhead mates. They're not getting anything. I've got uh, quite a few dickhead mates in my life at the moment. Um, I'm sort of getting to the, getting towards 40, right? So a lot of my mates, I don't know if anybody else has this problem here, but uh, uh, all my friends are into cocaine at the moment. So is anybody <laughs> real cocaine? We're quite rife in my life. The cocaine is everywhere. Everybody's into cocaine. It seems like sort of 30 to 60 appears to be the cocaine ears in Australia at the moment. People... <laughs> People, everyone's just in the coke. I can't go to a party or a gathering now with friends without them already trying to source coke or already being on coke. Right? I went to a mate's house and he greeted me like this at the front door. He opened the door, he's like, oh, Dan. Oh, mate, yeah, the party's out the back. It was his daughter's seventh birthday party. <laughs> it's a Sunday, it's midday. Have a day off, Scarface, for fuck's sake. <laughs> it's everywhere. It's unbelievable. I've never got into coke, personally, for one reason, one reason only. $400 a gram. <laughs> I'm priced out of that market, hey? <laughs> $400 a grand? Somebody call Consumer Affairs. That is a fucking rip-off, no matter what. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Give you, put it in perspective for you. Gold dust in this country, fantastic commodity. Gold dust, number one, $80 a gram. Coke's five times as much. <laughs> Why are we doing gold medals at the Olympics? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Just put a bag of Coke around the winner's neck. Gold to silver, silver to bronze. Fuck bronze off altogether. We don't need it anymore. <laughs> ridiculous. A mate saw me do this bit on stage one night. Right? He's a big coke man. He nearly lost his, his family and his wife over his coke. He had a real problem, lost like 20 grand, was in a bit of a hole. He came up to me after, he goes, Daniel, just so you know, you actually can't get a better time in Australia. You can't have a better night out and a better buzz than $400 a gram for coke. That's actually the best buzz you'll get for a night out. 400 bucks for that, it's, it's actually a good night out. You can't get anything better for 400 bucks. And I said, I disagree, cockhead. I said, give me your $400, I'll get you a better buzz. I'll pop down to Woolies. I'll get a thousand grams of cooked tiger prawns. Twenty nine ninety nine. Get a bit of bread, bit of seafood sauce. We're fucking having prawn sandwiches, mate. We're having pinging off our head. Our tummies are full. Absolute no brainer, in my opinion. <laughs> Police recently seized. Uh, you may have seen this on the news. They seized forty million dollars worth of street value. Forty million dollars worth of coke in some yachts up in Sydney Harbour. So that's off the street. Uh, so if anybody here tonight was going to get into that coke and you had your money set aside to buy some, what I'm doing, I'm going to spend the next few months, I'm going to collect, you know, I'm going to take that 40 million, collect it all, then I'll pop down to Woolies, <laughs> I'll get a million kilos of cooked tiger prawns, <laughs> 29.99, get some seafood sauce, fresh bread, we're having prawn sandwiches, we're picking off our head. Absolute no brain. <laughs> Not as many fans of prawn sandwiches in tonight <laughs> as I'd hoped. Um, Gives a cheer if you've had a prawn sandwich before. What the fuck? <laughs> four, four people have had prawn. Oh my god! That is a, it gives a cheer if you eat prawns. <laughs> fuck me! You got to get into prawn sandwiches. <laughs> It'll change your life. This summer, summertime, just a bit of fresh. F let me just explain this. This is outside of the show, but I'm going to tell you this just to 
enjoy your life is summertime. <laughs> Message me after you do it. Get fresh bread, fresh white. I know white bread's on the on the nose, but just get some fresh, <laughs> fresh white bread from like the bakery, fresh as you can get it. Cut it open, right? Bit of butter on there. Peel your prawns, six or seven tiger prawns cooked. Bit of uh, bit of bit of like lemon, maybe bit of salt and pepper, bit of seafood sauce. Bang! You're fucking in heaven. It's a, a, <laughs> no jokes here. Just pure. Public service announcements for people <laughs> who I can't believe only four of you have had a prawn sandwich. <laughs> Give us a cheer if you did. Have, the people who did say yes, just one of you put your hand up. Have you had a prawn sandwich before? Somebody that went woo, just put your hand up. You're <laughs> now you're backing out, are you? You're backing out on me. I just wanted you to confirm how good they are. <laughs> All right. Just fucking throw me right off. <laughs> Upset about how many people <laughs> don't eat prawn sandwiches here tonight. <laughs> I said I don't do drugs. I don't do uh, coke, obviously. Uh, there is one drug I've taken uh, the last few years. So I want to tell you about it. It's my drug of choice. Uh, it's the drug that gets me up and about, makes me quite high on life. And I've taken this for probably the last 15, 20 years, this drug. My drug of choice has been uh, finding the perfect car spot. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, baby. Does anybody else get into that drug? Oh, my God. I don't think anything else gets me higher in life than finding the perfect car spot. I'll take it. And he'd, he'd rock up to the little sign, see the spot says loading zone, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday to Friday. It's 11 p.m. on a Tuesday. I'm reversing into the spot. I'm walking down the street. I'm high. I'm bloody licking my lips. My nose starts bleeding. I'm horny. It's weird. Like, it is weird. It's, it's, it's weird, but I love it. I fucking love it. I love finding that perfect car spot. Rock up, loading zone. What's that? Loading zone. Okay, what's this one? Clearway. 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Monday to Friday. It's 11 a.m. It's a Thursday. I'm reversing into the spot again. <laughs> I'm dancing down to my physio appointment. Physio and I talking about the spot. Got the glow sticks out, having a dance. <laughs> listen to a bit of Daft Punk. One more. Just having a great time. Just listen to that song. Absolutely banging in the physio. And then uh, the florist from next door comes in, tells us to shut up, and we kick the shit out of him. Uh, <laughs> Just fucking stomping him. And then his son comes in. We stomp the son as well. And then um, and we chase them both back into the florist. We smash the florist up, just wreck the joint. Then they get cops down. It takes five cops to pin me down. Uh, turns out the side effects to parking are quite similar to ice. Um, no, I've, had, I've had a few issues with my, my parking over the years. Um, about five or six years ago, I hit rock bottom. I just started started taking parks when I didn't need them, basically. Um, <laughs> started, yeah, I was be out on a night. I'd go home, I'd see a spot and just sit there just to feel the rush, you know. Uh, started missing family events. Said I was out at a gig. I wasn't. I was out jumping the street trying to find that elusive park. Right outside a supermarket. That's what I craved most. Um, eventually, I hit rock bottom down dingy alleyways. No standing zones. I was just trying to get it, but nothing was wearing off because I had that fix so many times. I just... Didn't work as well anymore. Um, a couple of mates found me, rock bottom. Um, slumped over the wheel of my car, right outside of Coles. <laughs> covered in prawn shells. <laughs> I'll tell you one more thing, right? This is one more person that's not going to get on the wheel. And that is uh, an old school friend of mine who's done something kind of interesting in the last... This guy's not getting on there. I kind of had... was friends with this guy at school, but now we've really dropped off each other. Uh, mainly... Mainly, it really hit come to a head not too long ago because uh, he climbed Mount Everest in the last couple of years, right? And uh, I, he, it annoyed me. Um, <laughs> now, with something, something you don't really like does something cool. It's quite frustrating. He said um, he climbed Everest to find himself. That was his reason for climbing Mount Everest. I was like, how about you find my Will Smith CD you brought in your tent first? You asked. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't been get, able to get jiggy with it for 20 years because of you. Um, <laughs> What's the, what's the infatuation with climbing Everest anyway? I don't get it. I don't understand. It's a big cold mountain. Who cares? You know, it's 50 grand Australian to climb Everest. Did you know that? Plus six months preparation. No thanks. Plus, probably the red flag for me, frozen dead bodies of previous climbers <laughs> still up there. You know, when I hear that, I think, you know what? I'll give Everest a miss, I think. Yeah, I'll just pop up to Mount Kosciuszko for lunch. I think that'll do. Me. <laughs> just can't have some scones up there. Ridiculous. It was so frustrating. It came to a head at a party. We had a house party at a mate's place. Uh, and he's kind of on the landing telling his Everest story, right? And everybody was below him. Like, we were like the little climbers and he was like the mountain itself. And everybody was like clinging on. I was off to the side pretending to be one of the frozen dead bodies, just totally <laughs> disinterested in his shit story. You've never heard someone put on a big spin about cold, 
climbing a big cold mountain like this dickhead. He's like, oh, you feel disorientated most days. Uh, you wake up with a headache every morning. You can't walk 10 metres without being out of breath. I was like, we've all been hung over, fuckhead. Get off the stage. <laughs> Shut up, mate. <laughs> Bloody hell. You can scale a mountain for 50 grand, but you can't pop down to JB Hi-Fi and pick me up a copy of Big Willie Style for $10. <laughs> $10. You're an asshole, mate. Say hi to Colleen while you're down there, by the way. She's manager now. But, um... <laughs> Yeah, then he started talking about some avalanche he got stuck in. I was like, fuck, shut up, mate. He just, you know, I just started heckling him after a while. I just started going, na 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 <laughs> Just getting jiggy with it for anybody that doesn't remember great songs. Prawn sandwiches. Um, and he wanted to fight me. He tried to fight me at the end of the night. It did go quite awkward at that party. He was trying to fight me, but I'm still pretty quick on my feet. <laughs> and he's not very quick on his... One foot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> avalanches will get you. Uh, um, mm. oh. Disposal of body directions on the wheel. That's where it starts getting a bit morbid, doesn't it? Disposal of body. What are you going to do with your bod bod, your bits and pieces when it's all said and done? What are you going to do? Are you giving them, give them away? Are you going to hang on to them? What are you going to do? I, um, it's pretty full on. Like, oh, I've thought about it. I have arguments with my cousin Scott every Christmas time because he wants to keep his bits and pieces. And his argument is, I don't want to be walking around the afterlife without my kidneys. What is this an afterlife? And I was like, oh, afterlife or not, I don't think anyone's going to talk to you, mate, because you're a real fucking idiot. Like, you're, <laughs> you're a real frustrating person to deal with. I don't think anybody cares if you've got kidneys or not, mate. You know, you're a f massive flog. But... Um, <laughs> It does get you thinking. I remember when I filled that bit out, this, you know, the disposal of body, because, you know, I would like to give my organs when it's all said and done, like eye for an eye, lung for a lung, all that sort of stuff. And if I live old enough where I might need someone's, you know, bits, I will take them because I'm willing to give mine up, you know. It's pretty confronting. But do, do be aware when you eventually get around to doing your will, it, you know, you will have a moment where you fill that bit out, disposal of body directions, what are you doing with your bits and pieces? You will for about two weeks afterwards... See someone do something stupid on the street and think, fuck, I hope they're not an organ donor. Like, you, you, you really... <laughs> you see someone do a shit park or, like, trip on a gutter or something. Like, oh, fuck, can I put a sticker on that person? Just so... Not for Daniel Connell. Can we put that... Like, <laughs> you just be ready. Probably the best example I can give you of that is I was out, uh, I was out at a park just with my son. So, like, a beautiful Sunday in Melbourne. And we're walking up this path. I'm pushing the pram, picking up rubbish as per usual. And we get to, like, this little incline in the hill... And at the top of the hill, I can see a mother who's probably like, I reckon late 30s, two sons, about like 14, 12, these three people. They're all standing, all decked out, to my surprise, in rollerblades. Not 1996, this was quite recently, right? So they've got <laughs> rollerblades, knee pads, elbow pads and a helmet on. And they're all at the top of the hill. It's a very steady little, it's nothing, right, to go down. There's kids on scooters flying past. But I see them all covering the track. I think, oh... I better push off. So I take the pram onto the grass and say, guys, you come, come through, come through. Right? First little boy, he's about 12, in the tuck position, looks really uneasy on the blades. And his mum gives him a little push and here he comes, right? He's <laughs> look, totally out of control, coming towards me. And I, so I just happen to look down. I just look down at the path for some reason. Huge crack in the path where he's coming from. And I see he's coming towards I was like, mate, there's a, there's a crack in the concrete there, champ. Just don't hit the crack. You'll come unstuck there, mate. I was like, mum, there's a, just let him know there's a crack in the concrete. He's... Not just looking at me. He's looking down at the crack. I'm like, buddy, there's a crack in the concrete. He's almost at me. I was like, there's a crack in the concrete. Just there, mate. He hits the crack onto his knees, onto his face, lets out like a ugh sound, <laughs> slides to a halt. And I was like, fuck, mate, I told you about the crack in the concrete. I help him up. We walk over to a park bench nearby. I sit him down. I look back up the hill thinking, surely, you know, mother, they've taken their blades off. They're in socks walking down on the grass, down to where we are. Ah, second boy, 14. <laughs> Already coming towards me. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? He's like, mate, there's a crack in the concrete there, Jim. Buddy, tell your brother about the crack in the concrete that you hit. Mum, there's a crack in the concrete. He's like, looking at me, looking at the crack, hits the crack onto his knees, same thing, onto his front. I'm like, what the f This is bizarre. Like, what is going on? I help the second son up over to the seat, sit him down. They're having an argument, the two boys amongst each other. I think surely my new wife hasn't taken off up here. No, she's off already, the mum. Just, I'm like... I think, I've, I think I'm dead. I think I've died. <laughs> I think I've had a heart attack on the path. I'm just a ghost. No one's listening to me. No, one's, no one seems to be paying any attention to what I've got to say about the crack in the concrete. 
I'm like, boys, tell your mum about the crack. Ma'am, there's a crack in the concrete. You're gonna hit it. I'm, I'm rubbing it with my feet. Like, you're, gonna, you're gonna hit this crack. You're gonna hit the crack. She sort of slows a little bit, hits the crack, just a real gentle plot onto her knees and just sort of stops straight away. I help her up. I was like, I fucking told you it's all about the crack. Like, <laughs> take over the, the boys. Still like no looking, no mention of me, nothing. No reference to me at all. I think maybe that they don't speak English, but they're just arguing in English. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? They're all having a fight amongst each other. And I just sort of stepped away, got the pram and just went. I just like, I am, I'm out of here. I can't deal with this. It's frying my brain. <laughs> But that was like classic, like, can I put stickers on those three people? As I, I'm walking back to the car, I had a great park nearby, and, and I, was just, um, I was thinking about it. I was like, I'm doing all this stuff for my son's future. What, am, I, am I wasting my time? I'm picking up rubbish, trying to make sure the environment's great. Am I wasting, like, there's people sliding around on their skulls. <laughs> Maybe I'm wasting my time. Like, if they're still existing in our world, I don't think the world's doomed anyway, you know? Am I just wasting my time? So I feel sort of down about it. I get back to the car, put my son in. Just grumpy, you know. Just go to get in the in the in the driver's seat, and I hear rollerblades rolling up behind me. I'm like, for fuck's sake, <laughs> who's this? And I turn around, and it's the, the older boy. He's like 14. He's like, excuse me. I was like, yes. He goes, are you are you a comedian? I said, oh yeah, mate. He goes, oh, we saw you at the Christmas party at the park a couple of years ago. I was like, oh yeah, I'm... thanks, mate. Thanks very much. He goes, yeah, my dad, my dad and I were really big fans. I was like, oh, that's that's really nice, mate. Thanks very much. Um, where's where's dad? Was dead today. He's like, oh, he moved to Queensland. I said, I fucking bet he did, mate. <laughs> mm. I argue with my cousin, my cousin Scott. We 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 argue about all sorts of stuff. Um, he uh, we we argue about uh, obviously giving your bits up, and uh, the other thing we argue about is. Um, Probably, the cli probably climate change is the other thing we argue. Oh, every Christmas. He always wants to argue about it. He, he, doesn't think, um, he doesn't think it's real, climate change. He doesn't think anything's happening with the, with the world. And he thinks the person I use as my client, like climate change, like, you know, poo -poo, I get all my information off. He thinks that doesn't count. But I think Leonardo DiCaprio is a good person to get it off, you know. <laughs> he knows all his stuff, doesn't he, Leo? Um, you know, he keeps his, obviously, his women issue there. But um, <laughs> he knows what's going on with the environment. Yeah, he get, and then people don't... I always forget, he had a rough time with the environment, you know, he's on a boat many years ago and he hit an iceberg and <laughs> he died. So. <laughs> oh, poor fella. But, um, yeah, I, 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 luckily I'm able to keep in, you know, in touch with what's going on with the weather in the world and what's happening with all the weather, uh, just because uh, I've got an expert, a weather expert in my family, which is really nice, uh, keeps us up to date with what's going on. Uh, that's uh, weather expert's my dad, he's actually a weather, which is really cool, having a dad that's a weather expert. Um, dad was never, like, studied meteorology or anything like that at school, he was just given a, an iPad for his birthday a couple of years ago and <laughs> someone showed him the bomb website. Bureau of Meteorology, and since that day, dark clouds hung over our relationship because <laughs> I can't go home now or anywhere in Australia without him telling me what the weather's doing in that exact town. It's fucking very painful. I'll be in Adelaide for shows. Like, in Adelaide, mate. It's hot there today, 25. Get a late afternoon breeze. Yeah, might get a little shower overnight. I'm like, fucking shut up, mate. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> if you haven't showed your... If you've got a dad, like, over 55, if you haven't showed him an iPad and a bomb website, try and keep it that way because it is a nightmare. <laughs> Nightmare stuff, really frustrating stuff. Do you know uh, uh, universities have had a massive drop in the number of kids studying meteorology in the last five years? Uh, and I guarantee that's because of dads with iPads. <laughs> kids don't want to study something that they're, they're, like their dad's boring them with. So the numbers have dropped rapidly. There's a severe not cool change going through universities <laughs> around the world. Um, I'm actually convinced in about like 15, 20 years' time, every news bulletin you watch, when they do the weather, it's just going to be a dad with an iPad because nobody else has studied it. <laughs> Just going to be dad with an iPad, just like, g'day guys, yeah, Steve here with the weather. I'll just um, fire up the little iPad here and then we'll get the weather started. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's not turning on there, guys. Sorry, but... oh, can't... can't get that to fire up, so it was. I've charged it, I don't know why that's not... Last one on the old will is the uh, attestation of witness. Right? This is where you need two people just to sign on the dotted line, witness it, that you've done it all right. Um, you two guys, would you mind signing that for me tonight? And, yeah? All right. No worries. There's a pen there. 
I'll just get you to sign that. Thanks very much. There is a little gift involved for you as well, just for doing that. There's a, just a couple of DVDs there for you just to... <laughs> Thanks for that. Thanks. Enjoy. Thanks very much. You got a DVD player? No. No, OK, no worries. <laughs> no, but enjoy them. Yeah. Enjoy them. No, this, uh... Oh, look, we're almost coming towards the end of the show, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Um, out to my... Uh, Cult <laughs> following. No, appreciate it. I, uh, I'll tell you a couple more things, and I'll, I'll let you go uh, back out into the night. I, um, I, I am like I, I'm happy what I've been doing for my son. I think his future's sort of sorted. Like my son's generation, I think he's going to be all right. Uh, I, I think you know because there's so much cool stuff now. I know you know we ozone layer is an issue and all that sort of climate stuff, but I think we're getting you know things are happening to make it uh, get us on top of it. And he's he's just come around. He's just in such a cool time at the moment. I think my son, he's growing up in a really fascinating time. Um, like I heard about um, you know there's there's fetishes now that just went around when I was a kid. Like there's just so <laughs> many there's just so many cool things in the world. Like that's the basic example. But like I heard about this one. Recently, I, you guys heard about the milkshake fetish? You heard about this? this is sweeping Australia at the moment. This is unbelievable. I couldn't. I was like, God, it's a fascinating time to be alive, isn't it? Um, <laughs> the milkshake fetish. I'll tell you about it. Um, so what it is? It's a. Anybody can get into it, but we'll say in this scenario, it's a lady and a man. So the milkshake fetish. Uh, everyone's getting into it. Is where um, you just buy a milkshake. Doesn't matter what flavour it is. Uh, whatever you float your boat. Um, then warm it up in the microwave for 30 seconds. Trust me, it sounds a bit weird, but just get into it. Uh, then in this scenario, the man places his balls into the milk. Yeah. It's warm, so don't panic. <laughs> he blows bubbles into the milk, and apparently that sensation of the bubble is... <laughs> <laughs> apparently it's... <laughs> apparently it's pretty good, from all reports. Um, I know I'm getting a few weird looks from you, but... <laughs> I guarantee someone's fucking doing that after the show tonight. <laughs> I was keen to find out whether it was true or not, uh, whether that worked. Um, um, I'm married, of course, but um, <laughs> my wife was out one day, you know. I, um, <laughs> so if you on, on your own, I just I connected six straws together, basically. <laughs> <and>, um, <laughs> just, just a bit of DIY on a Sunday afternoon, and I um, I, actually, I, I set myself up, and I accidentally sucked up. Um, <laughs> It's actually quite a nice vanilla, vanilla milkshake, so <laughs> if anybody does that later tonight, please let me know how you got on. <laughs> Email us. Um, no, I am, I, am, I am happy where he's going with his, with, with his life and everything. I, I must say, though, I think his generation's fine. The generation after, I think, will be fine, but I think there's a couple of generations coming that might find it tr troubling because I've got word from an asteroid expert that there is an asteroid coming for Earth in about 140 years, so pretty full-on <laughs> stuff. Uh, that expert is uh, it's, it's dad. My dad's into asteroids. <laughs> He's into asteroids now as well. He's <laughs> unbelievable. He's convinced that apparently an asteroid's coming for Earth in 140 years' time. He got into his weather. That's kind of your gateway drug into <laughs> asteroids. Some, you know, he's found his way to asteroids somehow. Very frustrating. But uh, he, he thinks 140 years is going to wipe us out. I've been asking crowds, though, at the end of comedy shows, like, just say it's tonight. Uh, they're wrong. Say 140 years is really wrong. They got it wrong. They added it up. Didn't get it right. So tonight, there's an asteroid coming for Earth. We all get an alert right now saying, hey, government's just told us, asteroid coming for Earth. We've got 10 hours to live from this very moment. Been asking people what you'd do with that final 10 hours of your life if that happened. Like, well, you get some interesting answers. What do you reckon you do? 10 hours to live from right now. What are you going to do? Spend time with your boys. Excellent stuff. Nice. That's it for 10 hours. Then just... <laughs> Have a little drink of your own or anything? No, just spend time. What do you, hopefully they're into that as well. Then hopefully they don't <laughs> run off about uh, yourself. Ten hours to live. Oh, ten hours to, oh, your kids, not her boys, obviously. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ten hours with your kids. They're, our cousins, okay. Yeah. All right. No worries with yourself, mate. What are you doing? Ten hours to live. Uh, the milkshake thing. The milkshake thing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Okay. <laughs> the milkshake thing. Right. Um, how, old, how old are you, mate? 16. 16, great. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're doing six straws, then I'd say. Right. Yeah. <laughs> mm. 
Bloody hell. I think if there's not even 10 hours to live, you'll be doing that tomorrow, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> you can't wait to get down the milk bar tomorrow. <laughs> Is this your mum? No. no? Yeah, mum's gone home. Mum's gone home, OK. <laughs> get a milkshake ready for you. <laughs> I don't know. That's... Good luck with it, mate. Anyway, I hope you don't heat it up for too long. <laughs> you, mate, 10 hours to live? Prawn sandwich. <laughs> Fucking great callback, mate. Um, I'm into that. Prawn sandwiches. And finally, what would you do? Ten hours to live. Just get rat shit, mate. <laughs> nice. Prawn sandwich as well, just get rat shit. <laughs> try, try drugs you've never tried before. A lot of people say that. Like try heroin or something. If you've never tried drugs before. Um, a lot of people say that. That's a common one. Uh, had some doozy answers. Last couple of years, had some doozy answers. And uh, get some fascinating stuff. I was doing a gig, a Zoom comedy show... Uh, for some tradies. Sounds as bad as it could be. <laughs> but what a, like, I can't blame them. Like, they, these people have been working all day and then they put me in a, like, on site in a room and they just set up a laptop with me in my kitchen <laughs> doing half an hour of gags. Like, fucking unbelievable. Uh, they were there. And there was a guy, I was talking about this, and there was a guy called uh, uh, Shane and he's, he's got his arms folded. He's high vis gear. I said, Shane, what would you do, mate? Ten hours to leave. What are you going to do? And he goes, oh, I'd go to the strippers for ten hours. <laughs> saying, mate, if there's 10 hours to live, I don't think the strippers will want to dance for you for 10 hours. <laughs> I think they'll want to do something nice <laughs> with their final 10 hours. Uh, and he's like, no, nah, no, nah, strippers will make heaps of cash if there's only 10 hours to live. <laughs> so where are you going to... <sighs> mate, money's, money's irrelevant. They don't need cash anymore. Where are they going to spend it? He goes, no, nah, online shopping. <laughs> Just fucking kill us now, asteroid. <laughs> we are no chance. This world is doomed. It's like you don't have any kids at Rollerblade per chance, do you, Shane? <laughs> Unbelievable. Would you believe he was outdone though by a guy called Alan? Different Zoom show, IT company, bit better stuff. Alan's there on mute. I said, Alan, take yourself off mute, mate. What would you do? Uh, Ten hours to live. What are you going to do? Right? He goes, ah, uh, oh, I'd cut open a crocodile and get inside. <laughs> I laughed. Everybody, uh, everybody's laughing. He's blank face. I was like, sorry. <laughs> Not laughing, just quite serious. I was like, sorry, what'd you say? I cut open a crocodile and get inside. I was like, what? What are you talking about, mate? <laughs> you see, what do you mean? He goes, oh, crocodiles have been around for 200 million years. They've seen way worse than that. <laughs> I said, yes, Alan, crocodiles have been around for 200 million years. Men in the carcasses of crocodiles, on the other hand. <laughs> I don't think they're fed as well, champ. I wanted to push him because we're, you know, going to get, get up north and find a croc, 10 hours to live. I was like, where are you going to get one, mate? He goes, nah, Melbourne Aquarium's got one. It's five metres long. I was like, have you fucking been asked these questions before? <laughs> how, do you, how do you have all this up your sleeve, Alan? Unbelievable. I just said, best of luck with it, Alan. Good luck, mate. Mate, all go, but all goes well. Uh, I think how I'd spend I'd just spend it with loved ones as well, I reckon. I'd just catch up with my family and just sort of sit around. Uh, just talk about old times, just have a really nice catch-up. And then I think at the end of the night, I'd get, if I had friends there, family there, get them all into a minibus, all travel down to Melbourne Aquarium. <laughs> yeah. Watch Alan get fucked up by five metre pocket. <laughs> nice way to go. Dinner and a show, nice way to finish it up. <laughs> hey, that's it, guys. Thanks so much for coming out. Cheers. <laughs> Take it easy. See you later. Right, uh, the prawn sandwich standard, a couple of bits of white bread. Look at that, I buttered those already, they were pre prepared earlier. Uh, pop that down like that. Then you got your prawns there, just standard tiger prawns, peeled, delicious. Five or six straight on the bread like that. Bang, bang, bang. Just about six there. You can have eight or nine if you've got a lot of money. Um, looks like that. Then you go salt and pepper if you want, not crucial to the whole setup. Um, just a little bit of each and then a bit of seafood sauce. Just get a standard one from your Woolies or your Coles or wherever you shop. Squeeze that on. Oh, hang on, I think it's got that. Just keep going now. Just put that little thing on there. Lid back on like that. You'll probably have to do that as well, so it's good I've taught you how to do that. Squeeze that on. Oh yeah, almost there. Beautiful. Top bit on. 
press it down with your hand, like that, and away we go. Mmm. You're beauty.